All right. Good evening. Today we're learning Maseches Baba Metzia Daf Chav Tes and Lamed Amid Aleph. We'll see how far we get. I've uh, slated us to get to the two dots, the three lines before the wide lines on Lamed Amid Aleph. Um, we're going to be moving pretty quickly. Uh, I know the Chav Tes and Aleph is small, but the rest is not. We're at a Mishnah, two thirds of the way down, three fourths of the way down, on the bottom of Kav Ches Mibes. Here we go. If you find an item, and while you're watching the item, it financially takes care of itself. Kol Dover Sheoseve Ochel. Let's say you have a, a cow and the cow produces milk. The milk can be sold for money. So then what you do is, yeah, then you have to, you have to keep, you have to maintain that animal until the bilim show up. Okay. We're on the bottom of Kav Chesim and Bez in the Mishnah. If you have an animal that's useless and doesn't produce any funds, then yimacher, then that animal should be sold and you hold on to the cash. We'll discuss the money in a minute. You should give it back uh, as it is in the best possible way that you can. And in this case, that's money. So where the animal is self-sufficient financially, great. Where the animal is not self-sufficient, then you can just sell it for cash. What would we then do with that cash? So let's say I have a, a rooster, doesn't produce eggs, and it just clucks around and does nothing for anybody other than be annoying. So then that animal I should instantly sell. Now, if it's an Aveda, and I hold the money for you, the Bailim who actually own the animal, you're allowed to use those funds. That You can't keep them. It's not your money, but it's like loan in theory. You can use it as long as you just replenish the pot when the Bailim show up. Therefore, because you've been given access to use that money, if it then gets lost, oh, this is already a, a Shmira Sugya. Then we would say that you're Achroi. Rabbi Kiva Omer Lo Yishtamesh Bahen, he says that you're not allowed to use the money. If you sell the rooster for 50 bucks, the 50 bucks stays in an envelope, nothing you can do about it, just leave it exactly as is. And because that's true, Lafi then because you don't have access to the money, Pashat, you would then be putter from uh, from an Aveda if something were to happen to it. it. Says the Gemara, going back to the first din of the Mishnah, we had said that if you have this animal that produces its own proceeds, then you have to maintain it. A chicken produces eggs. Uh, cows produce milk, goats produce milk, whatever. All of those animals, they're self Ula Olam, says the Gemara. I have to worry about your animal forever? Well, who says you're going to come back? So says the Gemara, no. Amar Rav Nachman, Amar Shmuel, Ad Yud Beis Chodesh. This was where the idea of 12 months came from, from the early Amorim, from Shmuel. What is that change on the side? Amar Amar of Yehuda, Amar Shmuel. Oh, it might not be Rav Nachman. Yep. The din of Shalash Regalim was your limits of Hachraza. Right, right. Right. This is an unrelated din of what is the upper limit that you need to of you need to feed an animal that self that services itself. It's a loop. We're asking a very specific, narrow question. That was a great, great question to ask them. And Tanya Nami Hachi, we have a brisa that supports this idea of Yod Beis Chodesh. Kol Davar Shosef Ochel could go in part of the Chamor. These animals are self-sufficient. A Chamor can work, right? It, it gets its work in. I don't have to buy an animal if I have yours. So while you're out of town, I use your animal and benefit from it, no problem. Metapil b'hena Yod Beis Chodesh. Mitan ba'elach, sham d'meinu manichin, you measure, assess how much money, you measure how much money they're worth, and then the money sits on the side. Agalim usiachim, if you have calves, or if you have a uh, baby chamors, a siach is a baby chamor, metapel bohen shlosha chodashim, three months. Mikan ve'elach sham d'menu manich, and after that you cash out and put the money in an envelope. Avazim metarne golem, male ducks and roosters, metapel bohem shloshim yom, 30 days and goodbye. Mikan ve'elach sham d'menu manich, and then you just take the cash and put it in an envelope. Am Rav Nachman bar Yitzchak, tarnegoles ki gasa, a tarnegoles, an animal that does produce eggs, so those are kibahema gasa. They're like large animals that have milk and that they are able to produce their own proceeds. So uh, on this idea of Rav Nachman, we have a brisa, and then we're going to see a stira between the brisa of Rav Nachman and Marshmul above and the brisa of Rav Nachman bar Yitzchak that we are about to see right now. Tanya Nami Hachi, seven lines from the bottom, second of the wide line. Tanya goes to Behema Gasa, Matab of Behem Shlema Sarchodesh. 12 months for a Tarnagolas or for a Behema Gassimikan Then you cash out and put the money in an envelope. Um, if you have calves or if you have baby chamors, and this Bryce says a little differently than above. We're going to ask Akasha because we said differently by the Egel. 
We also said over here, avazim etarne golem, these are the male animals of these birds, of ducks and roosters. Bechol davar shetipulo meruva mischaro. Anything where the care is more than the reward that it will produce, if it costs me more to feed the animal than what the animal produces, the tapel bahen shlosha yamim, three days, that's it. Then you cash out. I don't need to be involved in a transaction where my expenses are shove to the animal. But then? That's your loss. Right. Because then what what's what ends up happening in that case is when you show up, will be like, here's your animal, but you owe me the cost of your animal. So that's not that's not me stop here. We would not push someone to do that because the math doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Never gonna return any lost objects to you. <laughs> What'd you just say? About losing a child at Great America? Oh my gosh. Wow. What happens on the other side of California stays on the other side of California. This is ridiculous. What kind of Jews are you? Oh my gosh. Okay, so by these animals, it's only three days. Three days for animals where it's too expensive to take care of them. Now the Gemara highlights that the Bryce said that we opened the Gemara with, the Tanya Nami Hachi, which was 10 lines from the bottom, and the Tanya Nami Hachi, which was 7 lines from the bottom of a double stira. Kasha Agolim Usiachim, Agolim Usiachim, and Avazim Atar Nagolim, Avazim Atar Nagolim. If you look in the first Bryce up, what does it say? It says by Agolim Usiachim that it's Shlosha Chodashim. In the second Bryce, it says by Agolim Usiachim, Lamed Yom. That's a stira. And then it's also... Akasha by Avazim, because by Avazim it says Shloshim Yom in the first Brisa. And in the second Brisa it says Shlosha Yamim, not Shloshim Yom. Very big differences. So the Gemara says, Kashi Agolam Asyachim, Agolam Asyachim, Avazim and Tarnagolam, Avazim and Tarnagolam, says the Gemara, no steer at all. Agolam Musyachim, Agolam Musyachim, Lokasha, Hadiraya. In one case, it's where the animal grazes. Low cost, I'm happy to do it for longer because I don't have to work so hard. The Had to Pituma, the others where I have to force feed the animals because there is no grass. I live in a desert that's much more annoying. Therefore, I have to watch it for a shorter amount of time. Three lines from the bottom. The bigger the animal, the harder it is to feed, the more you have to feed it, and therefore we can sell it sooner. And that's how the Gemara answers that. The Shein Osav Ocha, we said an animal that doesn't really uh, create this loop of feeding itself. The Pasuk says, We have to return the animal in its best form. If you're feeding an eagle's worth of food to an eagle, or a siach's worth of food to a siach, or that's ridiculous. That we don't do. We only do what makes sense. The money has to make sense. The animal's grazing, the grass is cheap. Okay, no problem. You want me to sit there and force feed your animal the cost of the animal? I'm not doing that. That's ridiculous. So we had said, we saw Machlokas Tanaim in our Gemara. Do we say that you're allowed to use the money, in which case you're Chai for Aveda or not? So we said, Rabbi Tarfan Amr Yishtamesh Bechuri. Adkan Lopliki says the Gemara to turn to the top of Chotas Badale, Elkshen Yishtamesh Ben. This is where you have the right to um, have access to the food. However, Avalon Yishtamesh Ben, if for whatever reason, let's say the Bailam, you know for sure you're not allowed to use it, Avalon Yishtamesh Ben, then Nim Avado, Pater, you would be Pater. And the Gemara says to an unrelated, seemingly unrelated, so Yalema, perhaps we should say Tabatu to the Rav Yosef. This might reject the sheet of Rav Yosef that we actually referenced yesterday. Itmar, Shomer Aveda. When we have someone who's watching an Aveda and something happens to the item, Rabbi Amar Kishomer Sacha, Rav Yosef Amar Kishomer Chinam, excuse me. Rabbi says, You're the lowest level of obligation of Shmira. Rav Yosef Amar Kishomer Sacha, you're the higher level of obligation, though not the highest level, because the highest level would be a Shoel, obviously. So it says the Gemara, you're like a Shomer Sacha, and that's a Kashi, because above we said that you are Imavado Pater. That's what he said on the second line. That's a Stira. So Amar Lach Rav Yosef, you're right. When we're talking about a case of Gneva Ve'Aveda, everyone agrees that you would still be Chayav like a Shomer Sacher. That's how Rav Yosef would hold. Kipligi last of the short lines on Chav Tesmanav. The Gemara says, what are we talking about? But Ones and Deshoel. We're talking about a case of an Ones uh, when you have borrowed something. Rabbeinu Tam Savar Sharulei Rabban on the Ishtamu Shebegavayu. That the rabbis allowed for you to use the money of this particular lost item. Vahavale Shoel Alayhu. And he's considered to be a Shoel. Rabbi Akiva Savar Lo Sharulei Rabban on the Ishtamu Shebegavayu. So okay, this is the machlokas. Says, do we put you together, Shoel, in our mission? Yes or no? Rabbi Tarfon says you're uh, Shoel, and Rabbi Akiva says you're not. Hilkach lo have Shoel alai. Says the Gemara i hachi. If in fact this is the machlokas that we're not talking about Gemiva ve'abeda, and we're talking about onsin to Shoel, i hachi says the Gemara. Then the lefichach by Rabbi Akiva, the lefichach that we said in our mission, Dama Rabbi Akiva lamali. 
that language should not apply. Why not? If you want to say Rabbi Tarfon and what says Balplug and Rabbi Akiva were arguing about the case of Gneva Vaveda like we initially thought, then I could understand. That I could understand because I'm a Gneva Vaveda. Because Sal Kadai Tachamina Shomer Sachar Habe Kid Rabbi Yosef Uv Gneva Vaveda Machayev. Kamash Malan, that the word Lafichach comes to teach us that Hash to Damers Loishtamish Bahen, that in our case where we're not allowed to use the lost item or its equivalent, then Shomer Sachar Lo Habe, Lo Machayev the Gneva Vaveda. That I could understand. I understand why Rabbi Akiva said Lafichach in our Mishnah. If you say that the case of Rabbi Tarfon or Rabbi Akiva is one of Gneva Vaveda, if everyone agrees in that case, you're chayev. And really, the machlokas of Tarfon or Rekiva is kipligi ba'ons into shoel. My lefichach, the Rabbi Akiva, that wouldn't even make sense. What would be the lefichach? If you are a shoel, then you're a shoel. There's no lefichach, you would not be chayev. That doesn't even make any sense. My lefichach, the Rabbi Akiva. He says the Gemara, you're right. Five lines from the bottom. This is really what, what the Mishnah should say. Rabbi Akiva Omer, lo yishtamesh bahen, v'ano yodana, and I would know. And I might have thought at that point that you're not a shoal and you're completely putter. What does that come to teach us? Nothing. It's only because Mishum Lafichach to Rabbi Tarfon. We needed the Lafichach of Rabbi Tarfon, and to make the Mishnah symmetrical, we also added a Lafichach for Rabbi Akiva. But you're correct. The Lafichach of Rabbi Akiva is really not necessary. I, the Lafichach of Rabbi Tarfon, Lamali. Hachikamar says the Gemara, this is what we need to understand. Mm-hmm. Since the rabbis allowed me as the Motse Aveda to use the, the Aveda, it's command it's, the it's as if it's mine, the Chayab Bacharusan. So it says the Gemara, that's how we can understand the Lafichach of Rabbi Tarfon. How could you say that it's Onsin de She'ela? Says the Gemara, that's not an Ones, that's you being irresponsible. If you lose something, it's not an Ones. If I lose your car, it's not an Ones. I'm just not good at my job. So, but it says avodas. It's a gemara kid rabba. You're right that it was a case of aveda, but it wasn't a regular case of aveda. Dama rabba nignavu belista mizuyan. Maybe it was uh, when we say nignavu, it was stolen. But mizuyan that isn't ones. It was stolen. And avado she tavas finasabaya. That's already an unfair case. You're right. I lost it, but I lost it in a way that was out of my control. That's the ones that we're dealing with. But. Had it been that I lost an item stam, then these halachos would not apply to me. These halachos are not the same. The Rebbe Akiva Rebbe Tarfon Machlokas is only in regards to Onsen. How do we pass it? Amar Bihuda, Amar Shmuel, Halacha Ke Rebbe Tarfon. Rebbe Tarfon holds that you are allowed to use the item that you have in your possession while you are watching it. Again, we're talking about a longer term issue, right? The 12 months. You're allowed to use that item or its financial equivalent. And says the Gemara, um, a little bit of a story. Biad Rechava, in the hands of Rechava, which is a man's name, not a woman's name. It's interesting because Rechav, whatever, it's just weird, <laughs> just a, an uncommon name. It says the Gemara, Rechava, Habulei Hanhu Zuzei Di Yasme. He had money that belonged to a Yasso. Asa Lekam Dorab Yosef, he went to go ask a Shaila. Am I allowed to use this money while I'm holding out? I want to do some, you know, penny investments. Like, can I can I use this money for myself? And I'll give back the principal. I just want to use it today. He says, am I allowed to use it? Amarle, Rav Yosef responded back to Rechava. Absolutely, no problem at all. You're allowed to use it. That's what Rav Tarfon says in our mission on the bottom of Kil Chesmet Beit. Amarle, Abayi, V'lav Yitmar, Allah, but don't we have a statement that says as follows, that Amr Rav Yichelbo, Amr Rav Huna, Lo Shanu Ela B'dmei Aveda, Ho'el V'tarachba, that the only re- time you're allowed to use that which is the item that you're watching is when you actually went and sold the original item and now you have cash. However, but if what I found was money and I didn't have to actively sell your annoying chicken, I actually just found cash that's yours. Lo, the hani kimo And this case of the Yisomim is like is like that case. It's like finding money. I didn't I didn't do anything hard. I just I'm just holding it for them. Says the Gemara. But Gemara, you're absolutely right. Amar lezil, you can leave the base medrash. So shavkuli to Ashrelach. I'm not allowed to be matir you. So the Gemara here makes a distinction that you're allowed to use the money, not stam. You're allowed to use money if the way I got cash was by selling the item that I was holding for you. So I had an animal that wasn't profitable enough to feed itself, so I sold it. The cash that I can use, that I can use, and I can just I'd have to pay you back, of course, but I can use it. Masha'en kain, if I were to have found cash of yours. 
there because I didn't have to go through the process of selling an item to get to the cash, and I simply found the cash, then lo shavki li ashri lach, I'm not allowed to let you use it. Very good. New Mishnah, Matzah Svarim, if you found a scroll, again, uh, not the books that we have in front of us, uh, they're a whole different ballgame. We're talking about scrolls. Matzah Svarim, Kari Bahen Echad Shloshim Yom, you have to read it once in 30 days. We don't want the pages to either mold or dry out, whatever the climate is that you're in, just to keep things fresh. If you don't know how to read, no problem, uh, but then you should at least roll it. You shouldn't uh, learn out of it. You shouldn't read two people reading out of the same thing. We're afraid you're going to fight about it and tear it. Um, and uh, if you find clothing, you should shake out the clothes once in 30 days. And you should lay it out if it needs to be laid out as needed. But you can't do it for yourself. Let's say that you, uh, I don't know, you found someone's really chashub looking garment, and if, if only you hung it in a public space, everyone would know your chashub, or they think you're chashub. That's not allowed. Never the chvodo, only the tzorcha. If you found silver items or if you found other metal items, you can use it for what is a normal use, but not something that's going to create a wearing out of. And you're not allowed to use it in that way. These things don't require any uh, use in order to be kept in their prime, uh, their prime position, their prime status, and therefore you can't use them until Elio and Avi comes. If you find something relatively insignificant, and it's not like you to take it, it's not the chubad for you to take it, then you don't have to take it. I raise the little at all. You don't have to pick it up. Fascinating. Opens the Gemara Amar Shmuel. It's the quarter of the way down Chav Tesimut Beis, making some good headway. Says the Gemara, Amotzet Tefillin B'Shok Sham Dmein Umanichan LaAltar. You uh, see how much they are cost, and you cash out right away. That's what you do with Tefillin. Why is that? Why isn't there a Din of Hashavu? Right, but I but but that's what that was the Din of the Mishnah. The Mishnah said that if it doesn't generate its own funds, but, but what's your upkeep? There's no upkeep, right? It's just budget neutral. Right, let, let's keep learning. We're going to see a little bit more in the Gemara, but I don't know the answer to that question, and it sounds pretty simple. I should have researched that. Sham uh, Masi Masi Ravina, hold on one second. He said, that's what you do at Tefillin? Says the Gemara, Matzah Svarim Karben Echel Shloshem Yom Bimenu Yudeli Kroz Gololan. In, you should not sell it. That if what do we do with a, with a scroll? Why is a scroll any different than tefillin? So Rabbi Tfilin Bar Chavu, this person who was the tefillin, he was the he was the Bitzal Shore of the community. Uh, it's easy to buy new tefillin. It's not so true right now, by the way. Parenthetically, there's a bit of a parchment shortage. Uh, but Svarim Lo it's much easier to buy tefillin. So therefore, by Svarim you don't sell, but by tefillin you do sell. Third of the way down, a shol sefer Torah mechaber. I borrow a sefer Torah from you. I'm not allowed. If I borrow from you, I, I'm not allowed to be mashila to anybody. That should be obvious. I can't take your item and give it to somebody else. Post you can open it and you can read from it. But you should not lechatchila be learning from it. Lo yikra acherimo. Another person should not read it with you. If I mafkid a sefer Torah by you, not borrow, but I ask you to hold it. You have to roll it once every twelve months. If you open it, to, you can open it to read from it. But if you open it just for yourself, that is not allowed. We're talking about the case of mafkid here. Sumcha summer bechadash of a sefer Torah is new. Then shloshim yom. Then you should roll it every thirty days. But yashin shnei masar chodesh. And if it's an old sefer Torah, you should roll it every twelve months. I'm just wondering now because when I was in Eretz Yisrael, I was in the, in the Rabbanut uh, army base. They had hundreds of sefer Torah, so roll them every twelve months. Ladina, I think it's a din. In, I think this is quoted in Shulchan Aruch. Does that mean it's just uh, barn? And yep. Again. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, if the concern is that you know whatever again air movement, whatever the svara is. But the concern is that it needs to be open. Remember also that a lot of their scrolls weren't on two Atze Chaim like ours. It might have had everything on one. So it's just different, different surah. That's like, look at our Megillahs that we have. Right. Megillah is just a free, re free reign. There's no skeleton to it. It's just a... No right, right, correct. That's a good point. Sefer Torah is I mean, a Sephardic one. Uh, whatever, there's a different Sefer Torah. I don't think there are any Sefer Torah on one Eitz Chaim. I've never seen such a thing. Probably. 
Right. Right. Well, how do you do hagba? What did you say? Oh, oh, very interesting. Very interesting. It's a roll back. It's a roll all the way. Every week. Every week. It, yeah, it, it can't be. It, it's that by definition is tircha de tzibur. Yeah. yeah, it can't be. It has to be that we. I'm sure the dina you need to have two atzechayim. Unless you leave it partially rolled, you could roll the megillah halfway and keep it. You can do exactly what you do without atzechayim. Correct. Oh, exactly. Can't do, can't do all you do. Pick it up, but you can't touch the cloth. So. Okay. That's what the Gemara says, is that um, every year base Chodesh, where are we? Sumchus Omer, Bechadash, Loshim Yom, Biyashan, Shnemasar Chodesh, Rebelaz, Renyak, Omer, Echazev, Echadash, Shnemasar Chodesh. No, new and old, once every 12 months. Now let's analyze this Brysa that we just saw about Shoel, about borrowing. Omar Mar, here's part number one. Shoel say from me, Torah Mechaber, Hareza, Loishal, and Lachir, my area is safe for Torah. Who cares? Um, what kind of din is that? I can't do that to your car either. I did that when I was in high school. I borrowed someone's car, lent it to someone else, and that person got into a car accident. Ooh. You're that, to blame. That was the last time I cursed in 1996. Last time. I'm coming up on my 28-year anniversary. I'm doing good. So that's the din, is that you can't be my... What's, what's with the din with the Savior Torah? Why are you specifying this case? You can't do it with anything. Who cares? The Gemara, you're right. But the Amr Shakish, Rav Shimon Ben Lakish, so says the Gemara. It applies to everything. You can't do it. We already know. We needed that case to be different. This is fascinating because we don't pass it this way. But the Gemara says you might have thought that someone would be okay if you take your item and you lend it to someone else. Which is interesting because if I want to borrow your tongue, I don't have to ask Rishos. Why? Because of it, it's the exact opposite svar. But that's not being shoel, right? That's not she'ela, that's not the shoel giving to another person. That's it's in two steps. Direct. That's me taking it direct. That's an afkamina. But my point is not that. My point is that we do employ this principle of of it, inish the mamonet, just not on two levels, only one level, only one level of borrow. What's that, Michael? You said employ, I say I'm many. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> okay. What is that alcoholic beverage you're kidding back yeah, yeah, yeah. You're you're off the rails here. What's happening right now? Still dry. I wonder if people like listen to this year. I wonder. I don't know. We'll find out. You got hits on YouTube. I know. I got some hits on YouTube. Average yeah, listening time smart. 39 seconds. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm famous. I'm famous. Everybody knows it. Okay. Says the Gemara. Next uh, statement. Post of a Korelo. You can open and read from a Pshita. Why else would you have bo borrowed it? It was to read from it. You're a show, right? The Elalamai Shaili mean out of Pasha. That's why you have it to read from it. Says the Gemara, Seifa Srikale. We actually need it because of the Seifa. What does the Seifa say? Obviously, you can open it and read it. Says the Gemara, because uh, we it, it shouldn't be just for learning. It should be for reading the Sefer Torah, not, not just for learning. If you you didn't borrow it, but I, I left it, I entrusted you to watch it. What do you mean? Why, why, are you, why are you using this? I asked you to hold on to it. It's a pikadon. Why are you using my pikadon? That's not allowed. And furthermore, in bishvilo pascal asr, we also know that if you do it for yourself, it's asr anyways. In general, that's true. So says the Gemara, Ha'amr is poschal v'koribo. You said that it's, uh, you, we have a stira, right? It says that in bishvil pisco, in bishvilo pascal asr, and Ha'amr is poschal v'koribo. So how do you, how are you able to open it and read it, but you're not able to open it because it's usher? So how do we how do we figure out all those pieces? Two thirds of the way down, Haki Kaamar, Imsho Golo Posech Vikoribo Mutter. If when you are rolling it, while you're rolling it, because it needs to be rolled periodically, that's when you're reading it mutter. But in Mishvilopasko, if you're opening it to read it, that's not allowed. That is usher. Sumcha summer, we had said in the Brisa, Bechodesh, Bechadash, excuse me. Shloshim Yom and Abiyashan Shnei Masar Chodesh. Rabbi Lazar Ben Yaakov Omer Echad Zev Echad Zeshnei Masar Chodesh. Rabbi Lazar Ben Yaakov Hainu Tanakama. That's very similar to the Shita of the Tanakama. Now Leima Rabbi Eliezer Ben Yaakov Omer Echad Zev Echad Zesh Shloshim Yom. We changed this Shita that every thirty days you need to rotate all of the Sifrei Torah. And again, if you have a collection, that's a big avoda. 
you know, for those of us who've ever rolled the Sefer Torah from uh, Tezos HaBracha to Breshis or the other direction on, uh, on, on, you know, on whatever, it's a lot. It's exhausting. It's exhausting. That counts as a workout. It's an arm, it's an arm day. You know, it's a, it's a lot of work. All right, here we go. At the two dots, the Brisa continues. Really, the two dots shouldn't be there. It says, Aval lo yilmad lo yikari acher imo. Or minu, how can you say that? Lo yikra parsha v'yishana. You shouldn't read a parsha and repeat it again. Lo yikra bo parsha v'yitargim. You shouldn't read a parsha and add in targum. Lo yiftach bo yosr migimel dapim. You shouldn't open more than three pages, possibly three columns. Possibly, maybe this is where we get the din from of three columns. I don't know that I've ever seen it anywhere else. Amar makum. I think this is the only one I've ever seen. Three people should not read it together. Now, this is a problem because we had said above two people can't read it together. And now it says three is the lower limit of people who cannot learn together, but two can. If you and I are learning over the same piece of Gemara, the same piece of scroll, whatever it is, and I think you're wrong and you think I wrong, I'm, I'm wrong, I'm going to pull the scroll away from you and prove that I'm right and vice versa. So that's what we're concerned about. But if I'm reading the top section of a... Of a of an Amud, and you're reading the bottom section, no stira, we're not going to be fighting each other, no problem at all. We had said, that if you find a garment, you have to shake it out once every 30 days. Who says that shaking out a garment is actually good for you? After all, only if you have a weaver, a fabric specialist who lives in your house, that's if you should shake it. But otherwise, it should not be good for you to shake out a garment, leave it as is. Amri, Says the Gemara, to do it every day is not good, but it's considered to be fine to shake out clothes once uh, once a month. Again, our clothes are so different and with such higher quality. Even our garbage is, uh, you know, I don't want to say a store name, but even the garbage, you know, it doesn't, it's a hundred thousand times better than what they had. Their clothes were so rough and unrefined. That's what the Gemara says. Next answer to this question of, um, of whether or not we say uh, that shaking out clothes is good. We're talking about one person shaking it out versus two people shaking it out together. If I'm holding the top of the garment, you're holding the bottom, we're going to stretch it. Maybe that's what we're concerned about. The third answer. One is shaking it out with his bare hands, and the other is shaking off all the dust with a stick. You know, like the old uh, Italian woman cleaning her carpet on the porch kind of a look. You know, just taking a bat, taking a stick. So that will ruin the clothes. And he buys same alokasha, but the imra hab the the kitna. It depends. With wool, wool can tolerate a lot more than linen can. Next, because we spoke about Rav Yochanan, uh, we're gonna learn a little bit of an agadata. I'm Rav Yochanan kasa de haroshin. If you have a um, a cup of sorcery, that's better velo kasa de potion of water that's lukewarm. Okay. Only true if it's found in a metal kli, a baba kli kharash in a different type of kli, less than buff. It's made out of pottery, no problem. And also, uve kli matachos nami, even there, lo amar nela de lo tzavis, that's if the, the drink hadn't been boiled yet. Aval de tzavis, had it been boiled less than buff, then nothing to worry about. Lo amran, elo de lo shad de tzivia, if you didn't add in any ingredients, any any tea leaves, whatever, aval shad de tzivia, less than buff. Super unique, uh, not a very common thing to, to hear about. And we will learn about this again in Maseches Chulin. Another din by him. If a father left you a lot of money, and you want to empty the bank account, here's what, what you should do. It's a little tongue-in-cheek. It's a little, uh, this is how you should not behave, but it's framed in the in the opposite way. Uh, what you should do is, Yilbash Big Day Pishtan, you should wear fancy clothes. And you should use glassware. You should hire people and not watch over them. Let's analyze these three things. Yilbash Big Day Pishtan, that's the Kitna Romisa. That's with Roman linen. Very chashu, very expensive, very high end. Whatever the high end brand is that would be that today is what we're talking about. What does that mean? The white glass, which was apparently very expensive back in the day. Our glass production is on such massive scale. You can get whatever you want for cheap, any color. It doesn't matter. What was the third thing? Tirgama says, We're talking about sheep, uh, or not sheep, yeah. animals, sure, who uh, who cause a lot of damage. Machlokas Rashi Tos was here if we're talking about workers who are causing damage or if we're talking about shvarim who are causing damage. But one way or the other, that's what you should do. If you don't watch over your staff, they're going to do a bad job. Two dots, two second second line. Baruch Hashem, we have enough time. We'll get to where we're supposed to get to. When we say the tzorcha, ule tzorcha, my. 
Now, we had said initially that if I'm opening the Sefer Torah for myself, it's not allowed. I can only open it for its own purpose because I have to roll it. What if I have two intents? What if it is to roll it? But in the meantime, it's also my bar mitzvah parash and I get to do chazara. Says the Gemara, Tashma, shot We are we have a brisa like this. It says you can only lay out the clothes for its own purpose. Litzarcha in halitzarcha ulitzarcha lo. Perhaps that if you have a double motivation, that's not allowed. Says the Gemara, I must say, but that's not true. Alol lechvodo. We said you can't do lechvodo. Lechvodo who delo? But maybe we should say it's only when it's purely for you. You're not allowed. Halitzarcha ulitzarcha shaper dami. But perhaps. Perhaps that if it's for both of them, then it should work. Says the Gemara, you're absolutely right. The Bryce has op opposite implications, and therefore, Laman Amid Base five lines down, you cannot use this as a Mari Makom. Back to our question what if a person has a double motivation, Litzorcho and Litzorcho? Toshma, let's try again. You cannot lay out something on a bed or over poles. You can do it for its own purpose. Now, let's look at the next in, in this Bryce. Nizdam lo orchem, you have guests, lo yishtachen lo al gabe mita, lo al gabe mago, ben letzorcho, ben letzorcho. There, if guests are over, you're not allowed to hang up this item at all. Um, and uh, why is that the case? It must be that even though there's a double motivation of letzorcho and letzorcho, it must be that that's unacceptable. Shiny Hassam says the Gemara, though, by, by the orchem, that's not a raya. Because if you hang out an item that's very expensive looking, the mikla kalile will get burnt up, it will get destroyed. What does this mean? Imishum eina, one is because of Mar, uh, of Ayin Hara and Imishum Ganve. If you if you have a hush of thing that doesn't uh, and you're you're just showing it off, you're putting it out there so people have Ayin Hara, which is halachic. Ayin Hara is not hibijibi. Ayin Hara is very halachic. Rabbi Francis gave a shir here about tzitzis once, um, how tzitzis remove Ayin Hara. There was anybody there for that? It was a fascinating halachic shir that he gave. So somebody raised their hand and said, "What about women?" He said. Let me tell you, the garment has the power to prevent iron heart. It's just the way that it is. Nice big shadows and post them. Does it apply at night? Uh, big shadows and post them. If you shower after shkia, should you put on your tzitzis again? Because of the machlokas, if tzitzis is ksus laila or not, so suffix brachos. So does the suffix brachos stop you from putting on? These are all shadows by, by Hilchos tzitzis. Okay, not for now. It says the Gemara, therefore, we don't have an answer. Let's try again. Toshma, we are 12 lines down. Um, an animal was brought into the pen this is talking about an egla arufa and, and by the egla arufa we have to make sure that it's an animal that was not worked now the animal was dasha on its own I didn't I didn't make the animal be dasha I just did it on its own however if I have a double intent I want the animal to go in there not only to do that but also to nurse the young so then that's psula so we see the answer to our question from the case of Egla Rufa. Says the Gemara, no, shiny hasam damar kroi v'pasuk there. It's exer sakasuv asher lo uvad ba mikol makom. That's different. Says the Gemara, if it's if it's mikol makom, miachi afilu reisha nami. Then in the reisha, when it went into the ravaka by itself and it was dasha, ah, that shouldn't have worked either. That should also have been a psul. Why don't we say that? Says the Gemara. Hello, Damya. The case of Egla Rufa is only comparable elu lahadetnan to a case of. The uh, the red heifer itself. There's no other comparison. Shekane aleha of kshera. If a bird lands on the animal, I it's carrying a weight. That's not what the pasuk meant. That's not ubad ba. However, Allah aleha zachar psula. However, if there was a, a male that mated with this animal, then it's psula, meaning it's not. It's it's the the ubad ba right that the animal put its weight the male animal put its weight on the female animal that makes the animal puzzle. Rabbi Re, Rabbi Reznik no, Rabbi Reznik could I listen to from Rabbi Leibowitz so Rabbi Ari Leibowitz told a story about this that this guy in New York had an animal that he thought really could have been a para aduma and then the animal he noticed was pregnant and, oh. and it's a psul because that means that there was that means that there was a male involved and that was a psul. So my time, says the Gemara, why the distinction? Kedirak Papa. And Rav Papa over here looks at the creek seed. The Pasuk says, Asher lo ubad ba. Now ubad is written with uh, the three dots for the u. It, it doesn't have the vav in it. So says the Rav Papa, as far as brilliant. Doma Rav Papa, ikas of ubad vikarinan ubad havamina filam amela. Had the Pasuk been read and written the same way of Uban, which means that it happened to it. It's not that I did it as the owner. It happened. So then I might have thought, have a mean feeling may even if something happened on its own. No problem. The Iksiv Avad, the Karinan Avad, if it would have said Avad and Avad, but we pronounce it Uban, we don't. But if it's Avad, Avad, then have a mean 
of Ad Ba'ihu, then he would have been had to be the one to cause it. And even if there is mating, but if I'm not the one who caused the mating, so then there's no reason why the animal should be possible. Therefore, we need the Ubad to be similar. So that's why you can't learn anything from Egla Arufa about our case. We do not have the answer to our question that we started with at the top of the page. That if I have a double motivation, does that work? We do not know. We do not. Halfway down at the two dots, and these are allowed to use. Let's go through some nuanced dinim over here. If you have wood, you should use it. Wood can rot, and you should use it and clean it off every once in a while, whatever. You can use in hot, but you can't put it over a fire because that makes it too smooth. It's, it's going to lose its uh, its texture. You can only use it in cold. Hot makes silver tarnish. We actually know more now. Oxidization, oxygenation, oxidization is what actually makes it be. But the heat does have more of that for sure. Magrevos vekardumos, these are sharp things like shovels and axes. Mishtamish ben birach. You can only use them in soft dirt. However, because that will get rid of the sharpness of the axe. That's not allowed. Like we said, there's no need to touch those. If you're watching them for someone, they'll be fine for thousands of years the way they are. They don't need anyone to touch them. And the same thing that's true by an item that's lost is also true by an item that's a pikadon. Says the Gemara, what kind of comparison is that? What do you? What does that mean? Why are you saying that? They're not the same. The, all the halachos that we just learned, we say they apply by a Vedan Pikadon. Why, why do they apply by, by, by a Pikadon? It's not my job. The guy can come over and take it back from me. No, he's out of the country for a couple of years and you're watching it. If that's the case, you become a Chroy on the Pikadon just like you would have on the Aveda. We'll stop right here and on Shabbos, we'll pick up two lines before the wide lines on the bottom of Laman Amidala. Wishing you all a beautiful night.